Welcome to my channel. Today we are discussing dividends, earning per share, dividend per share, price earning ratio, dividend yield, etc. This is basically an extension of how earnings are paid as dividend and how it helps firms increase market price of stocks. There will be some formulas, some ratios which one needs to understand to be able to know how dividend per share, dividend yield and price earning ratios are calculated and what does they actually mean in real life scenarios. Dividend in this context can be referred to as part of the profit after tax which is actually distributed by the company among the current stockholders. A dividend might not be paid by a company if the board of directors think that the earnings are required for reinvestment. Generally growing firms don't pay dividends or pay very low amount, less amount of dividends. However, most of the public and registered firms continue to pay cash dividends. Generally, dividends are known as dividend per share and dividend per share is lesser than earnings per share. So that is why a particular percentage of earnings per share can be paid as dividend. So when a public firm like Apple Inc, Samsung Incorporated or for that matter Reliance Industries Limited, they pay a cash dividend. It reduces their cash balances and also reduces their retained earnings at the end of the year. The first concept we are undertaking is EPS. We have already discussed this in another video which was previously uploaded. Earning per share is profit after tax divided by number of outstanding shares and which comes to profit per share earned by a firm. So if MNC Limited has a net profit after tax of 50 million dollars and number of outstanding stocks but for MNC Limited is 50 million then the EPS is 50 million divided by 50 million that's one dollar per share that means MNC Limited is generating a profit of one dollar for every share it has sold and outstanding in the market. We cannot say whether the EPS of dollar one per share is actually good or bad. It has to be compared. If in, in the previous year the company earned an EPS of 0.8, then 1.01, that is dollar one of EPS this year might be very good. Example. The company earns a profit of 50 million. It pays a tax of 30 percent, 15 million on EBT. PAT comes to 35 million. Reference dividend is paid 5 million. Balance of profit, which is available with the firm for paying equity dividend, is 30 million. One must remember that if the company has outstanding stocks of preferred stock then any agreed preferred dividend must be paid before equity dividend can be declared. So a company which has outstanding preference dividend which are not paid cannot be allowed to pay equity dividend. So that is why 5 million preference stock dividend must be paid. 5 million 10% preferred stock. So 10% of 1 million shares into 50 per share. 
that 5 million. So whatever profit is remaining after that is 30 million. Number of stocks which has been issued by the firm is 50 million. When you divide that, you come to an EPS of 0.6. Again, if in the last year the dividend EPS was 0.5 and this year the EPS is 0.6, Last year's dividend, sorry, last year's EPS is lesser than current year's dividend. So this means EPS has grown. So this is a good sign for the shareholders that earning per share has grown considerably from 0.5 dollars to 0.6 dollars. Dividend per share. How much dividend a company is paying on a per share basis? We have seen in the previous example that the EPS of the firm is 0.6 dollar. It might pay lesser than that. So the board of directors decide to pay half, 50 percent of the EPS on as dividend. That's 50 percent of 0 0.6, 0 0.3. So DPS is EPS multiplied by dividend payout ratio. Dividend payout ratio in this case is half of the EPS which is 50%. You can calculate the DPS by taking a different percentage as well. Higher dividend payout ratio will mean higher DPS. Dividend yield. Dividend yield is a concept which is associated with if you have invested in the farm by paying the market price, then how much yield you are getting, how much return you are getting at the end of the year. So this means if the company in the last sample example was paying a dividend of 0.3 and the market price of a stock is $10. That means the stock is paying a dividend yield of 3% only. So it is a very low amount of yield which might not satisfy the shareholder. However, we cannot say uh, whether it is a good yield or bad yield. If in the last year the dividend yield was 2%, now it is better. But in comparison to a similar farm which pays 6%, which is able to have a yield of 6%, and your company is paying 3%, you can say dividend yield of the other company, competitive farm, is better. Which means if you invest in that farm, your dividend yield is better because it is paying a higher dividend yield. Dividend yield, like I said, the EPS is 0.6, DPS is 0.3, market price is 12.5. Now the dividend yield is 2.4%. If a stock is paying a high dividend yield, it is a good option during periods where returns are very volatile in the financial markets. Risk aversion means risk which shareholders, investors doesn't want to take. Such investors can opt for high dividend yield stocks, stocks which generate higher yields. However, it must be remembered that dividend is generally not paid by growing firms. Growing firms which are known by growth stocks, these firms retain majority of the profit and invest to grow business in the future. So, 
dividend yield might not be very interesting to uh, investors who prefers to invest in a very high growing companies growing companies they would need more capital more money more return on earnings more profit to be invested back into the business because the business is expanding rapidly hence we cannot definitively say whether a high dividend yield is good for all types of stocks it depends upon circumstances and it depends upon what kind of investor you are what kind of risk uh, you want to undertake price earning ratio this ratio is often used by investors to find out what the general investor in the market thinks of a company thinks of the management thinks of how the management is undertaking the business the price earning ratio is the ratio of the current market price to the earning per share this is simple ratio if mnc limited has a price earning ratio of point of 22 this means will the investors are ready to pay 22 dollars for the stock which is earning only dollar one of eps so this means the price earning ratio is quite high 22 times of the eps so stock price is related to eps In the current example, the EPS was 0.6. Market price we took it as 12.5. So EPS is 20.833, which means for every dollar of EPS, the shareholders, the general investors in the market is paying 20.83 times for the share. so the price earning ratio of mnc limited is quite high this also means that shareholders investors think that the management is actually doing very good and the pers- prospect of the business growing in the near future is quite good that is why they are willing to pay so much times for the stock for example you compare price earning ratio of 16 for form a and price earning ratio of mnc of form b to be 20.833 pe and assume that eps of both the firms are only dollar this means this share is 16 times the eps while this share is 20.83 times the eps so this means the shareholders the investors in the pub, public investors in the market are putting more emphasis in the ability of the management of form b to be able to generate more profit grow rapidly and on more profit in the next few financial years that is why the price earning ratio of form b is much greater than price earning ratio of form a thank you so much for today's seeing today's video you can send me an email if you need more details regarding the topics you can whatsapp me you can send you notes more examples please subscribe to the channel thank you very much 
Bye-bye. See you next time.